Please stand. We begin our service by singing in number 170, Hallelujah to Jesus.
our service continues on page two of our green booklets. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, the Father of all mercies, cleanse you from all your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forevermore. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 128. It's a very short psalm. If you have a Bible, or your Bible with you. We say it together. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. You will lead the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your sons will be like olive shoots round your table. Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem, and may you live to see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please be seated.
we start in manual praise this morning with number 68. Come bless the Lord, come bless the Lord, O ye servants of the Lord, O ye servants of the Lord, who stand by night, who stand by night in the house of the Lord, in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands, lift up your hands in this holy place, in this holy place, and bless the Lord, and bless the Lord, and bless the Lord, and bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord, come bless the Lord, O ye servants of the Lord, O ye servants of the Lord, who are here right now, here right now, in this house of the Lord, in this house of the Lord. Lift up your hands and lift up your heart in this holy place, in this holy place, and bless the Lord, for he has been so good, and bless the Lord, and bless the Lord. Lift up your hands and lift up your heart in this holy place, in this holy place, and bless the Lord, and bless the Lord, and bless the Lord, and bless the Lord. We can't sing like that, but uh, we can lift up holy hands and bless the Lord, and we can worship him still. We can still lift up our hands and wave unto the Lord and bless him still. Tell him thank you, tell him, tell the Lord thank you. Tell him thank you, tell him, tell the Lord thank you. For all he's done, I will say thank you, Jesus. For all he's done, I will say thank you. Oh, tell him thank you, tell him, tell the Lord thank you. Tell him thank you, tell him thank you. Tell him, tell the Lord thank you. Tell him thank you, tell him thank you. Tell him, tell the Lord thank you. For all he's done, I will say thank you, Jesus. For all he's done, I will say thank you. Tell him, thank you, tell him, thank you, tell him, tell the Lord thank you. Tell him, thank you, tell him, tell the Lord, thank you, for all he's done, we are saying thank you, Jesus, for all he's done, we are saying thank you, Jesus, tell him, thank you, tell him. much. We've been kept by his might. We've been kept by grace. 
when we have any opportunity to thank him, we owe him that much. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land. That all men might see the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land. That all men might see the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see. We want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Step by step we're moving forward, little by little we're gaining ground. Every prayer a powerful weapon, the strongholds come tumbling down and down and down and down. Oh, we want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land. That all men might see the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land. That all men might see the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see. We want to see Jesus lifted high. Step by step, we're moving forward. The lips and bounds we're gaining ground. Every prayer's a powerful weapon. The strongholds come tumbling down and down and down and down. We want to see Jesus lifted high. A banner that flies across this land. That all men might see the truth and know. He is the way to heaven, way to heaven, way to heaven. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. And we are marching, we're marching, we're marching. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, marching. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are moving in the power 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 of God. Oh, we are moving, we're moving, we're moving. Oh, we are moving in the power of God. Yes, we are moving, we're moving, we're moving. Oh, we are moving in the power of God. We finish this morning by saying, He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. And He is Lord. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. Over all, He is Lord. Hallelujah. He is risen from the dead and Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every worship, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
remain seated for our first reading. First reading is from Genesis chapter 29, 15 to 28. <clears throat> Laban said to Jacob, just because you are a relative of mine, should you work for me for nothing? Tell me what your wages should be. Then Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel was lovely in form and beautiful. Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I'll work for you seven years in return for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it's better that I give her to you than to some other man. Stay with me, stay here with me. So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife, my time is completed, and I want to lie with her. So Laban brought together all the people of the palace and gave a feast. But when even came, he took his daughter Leah and gave her to Jacob, and Jacob lay with her. And Laban gave his servant Zelpha to his daughter as her maid servant. When morning came, there was Leah. So Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? I serve you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? <coughs> Laban replied, it is not our custom here to give the younger daughter uh, daughter in marriage before the older one. Finish this daughter's bridal week. Then we will give you the younger one also in return for another seven years of work. And Jacob did so. He finished the week with Leah and then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, 26 unto 39. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God for you, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also calls. Those he calls, he also justifies. Those he justifies, he also glorifies. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously 
give us all things. Who will bring any charge against those who God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written? For your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Not in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Gradual hymn is number 301, Jesus Shall Reign. Jesus shall reign where the sun, the peace of safety journeys wrong. His kingdom stretch from shore to shore, till moon shall wax and wane no more. Oh, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the book of Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus told the crowd a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. 
When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad one away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of, who brings out of the storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always pleasing in your sight, O God, our Savior, strength, and Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Perhaps our cantor will sing a little song for us. Jesus, name above all names. Thank you. Our text for today is taken from our gospel reading from St. Matthew chapter 13, verse 45 to 46. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. All the parables, and um, especially this one we'll be talking about, are all similes that relate to try and show how important and precious the kingdom of heaven is all about. And the whole Christian journey is to lead us back into our Father's presence in our day-to-day -day living and at the end. Simple question, who doesn't like beautiful things? Who doesn't like diamonds or gold, even though you might not wear it? Who wouldn't want a ton of gold? Ah, uh, you see. Not because you might want to wear it, but you know it's important. It's of great what? Value. Beautiful things. Don't let me see the whole planet. Most people want them. And there is nothing wrong with that. A pearl is interesting in this parable. A perfect sphere 
of purest white, sometimes pink or occasionally black, cloudy, reflective, with a multitude of shades known as Orient. A pearl is a gemstone, but you know what's interesting about it? It is the only one not created in the soil. It's the only gemstone that occurs in a natural living organism. It is the only one that exists naturally. It is formed when a piece of sand falls into the open shell of an oyster. To avoid irritation, the oyster slowly covers the gritty fragment with concentric layers of smooth and translucent nacre, or mother of pearl. If it is less than perfectly spherical, or the purity of the color is mad, the value drops or decreases. The value comes from our rarities and from the labor of the pearl fishers who have to dive to great depths to fish for them. The problem is not all oysters contain nacre or mother of pearl. And there's a difference between natural one or farmed ones. And the farmed ones, those who farm them, when you take out the pearl, the oyster doesn't die. They are so precious to them that they use the finest equipment, surgical, to take out the pearl. It does not command the same price as the ones formed naturally. And I think those ones are getting rarer and rarer by the day. So you might have a mother of pearl when you buy one for about, um, I don't know, 40 pounds or whatever, and you can see another one for hundreds of thousands of pounds. There's a difference. Purity like diamond. It's been rumored or said that Queen Cleopatra dissolved pearls in wine and drank it as a public display of our wealth. Today, people have their wine with what? Gold flakes or food to show that they are rich. If you look at your TV food program, this. Yeah. because it's gold. Now, not to bust your bubble, you could do the same. If you went to B&Q and got um, the sell what they call gold leaves, you see the pulpit over there? It's very flaky. That's what you used to. So you can sprinkle that on you. Don't, do, don't, don't go and do it. I don't know if it's safe to eat. I've never tasted gold. I will not. Not unless I'm desperate and there's no food around. But people do it. Each to his own. Pearl. It's so precious and hard to find. People die trying to collect it. That's why it's so rare. And the kingdom of heaven, even though it's among us, can be equally so precious and rare to find. Have you ever lost something? I don't know, maybe a pencil, a pound or something like that. And you look and look, turn the house upside down and you can't find it. Yeah. And days later or weeks later, there it is right in front of you. Has that ever happened to you? Yep. It's right, it was right in front of you, and you looked and you couldn't find it. And that is the same with salvation. Right in front of all of us, the kingdom of heaven, and many people never find it. We begin to live the kingdom life in this life to the world to come. Why? If you don't have the virtues of peace, joy, happiness within you, do you seriously think those who have gone before us want you to bring chaos and grief into their presence of mist? You know, when you enter a place and you are the latest 
person on the block. You abide by the rules, don't you? Even if you are so rebellious, if everybody is having a three-course meal and you are using to having your fish and chips on newspapers, when there is no newspaper, you will begin to do what? Copy. You might look sloppy in the beginning, but your environment will begin, hopefully, to transform you. We are being called in this life to be transformed, to be people to eventually take our rightful place in the life to come. In, uh, in, in the book of Job, 28, 18, it says, No mention shall be made of coral or of crystal. The price of wisdom or the acquisition of wisdom is above that of pearls. You see, I bring you something even more expensive. Wisdom. To acquire wisdom is even what? More expensive than pearls. And then again, going to the same Job, same chapter, 28, 28. And he said to man, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Wisdom and understanding is what we need. And we actually don't have that in abundance in the world we live in. That is why we're in trouble. That is why they keep on saying, Oh, Mr. Prime Minister, Mrs. Prime Minister, Mrs. Head of State, Finance Minister, you have not done X, Y, Z. Not everyone understands. Not everyone has wisdom. And there's also been able to listen to the wisdom of those who know better. A wise person does not despise instruction or being rebuked. Only a fool, as the proverb says, fears being rebuked. See, pearls are bought and sold for a profit by rich and poor alike, or to anyone willing to pay the price. Yet, we do not labor as much or search as much for the wisdom of God, which is Jesus Christ. All that we are, all that we accumulate, all that we dream of, can only become a reality in Christ, in this life and that to come. In our gospel reading, our Lord said, actually, he, he, he entreats us to desire the kingdom of God as much as the merchant desired the pearl. There is nothing wrong with wanting beautiful things. Actually, we are mandated because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This is our Father's world, and all that belongs to him belongs to us. Yes, we should do those things, but not at the expense of acquiring wisdom and understanding as to how the world goes. Matthew 7 says, 7, 6, Do not throw your fine pearls before swine. And many people do that. And the question is, are you able to make the ultimate sacrifice? Going back to wisdom and understanding, Obtaining the kingdom of God should be our number one priority always and everything else will follow. God is the king and anyone who obeys him who fears the Lord that is the first step in acquiring wisdom and understanding. My question is who is the king of your life? Wisdom. People will say, oh, I was smart when they've done something, I got away with it. It's called wisdom. No. And our gospel reading proves that point. 
Without laboring too much about it in Genesis, we, con we, we are following the story of our father Abraham and um, his children, you know, and our fathers, so to speak. <laughs> Jacob's marriage to Leah and Rachel. Laban did what? Tricked Jacob. Guess what? Jacob tricked his brother and father. It just didn't stop there. If we go fast forward, which we'll get to, his own children tricked him by selling his son, Joseph, into slavery. Do you begin to see? He thought he was wise, but it wasn't wisdom from God. And do you see how he had to suffer for that? He ran away from home. He had to go and pay. Do not think that you are very smart. The issues facing the world today is those who believe that they were smart and wise. That is what has been operated today. The evil that has been buried for hundreds of years, the sand of time, to use somebody's word, the wind of change, you all know who I'm talking about, has now all of them up. So that you can see the root. If you want to take out a tree, I remember that I was, I can't remember what I did in secondary school. Some of you will understand this. Today they will probably call it child abuse or whatever. But in the environment that you live in is reality and today is reality. To be a farmer, you must steal the ground. It's not called abuse. It's called the reality of life. If you can't walk with your hand, you, ain't, you have no food. In this environment, it might be. I, w I can't remember what I did in secondary school. I was punished. But thankfully, I had somebody who was more skilled. And our punishment was to uproot a palm tree. To clear, because you have what you call agricultural science. All the boys did agric science. And you have to use your machete. It's not abuse. You don't plow the fields. You don't need. It's a reality of life. Whatever you might call it in the Western Hemisphere. That's just a reality for farmers. I had, in my entire life, never chopped down a tree that big. One, we had to cut it. Then we had to dig. You see, a palm tree has a tap root. It goes, it doesn't spread. So you have to dig about two feet all the soil around it to cut at the bottom. Because that was standing in the path of the new field for us to plant crops on. Because you do crop rotation. You rotate the land so that you can get nitrogen and you plant stuff in to replenish the land and then you let them go fallow for years so the land can breathe again. All that you learn. After school, for about three days, I had to, I was just so thankful. I was shattered. If you've never, little, little me, trying to cut down the whole big massive palm tree. The roots are deep. So chopping the top off and throwing sand on it or earth on it does not do anything at all. So those who thought actually with wisdom we had covered up events, we can remodel history, rewrite history. They had forgotten something. When the wind blows, they sand everything out. And so it happened to our father Jacob. History waited for him. He just didn't wait. His own children practiced that deception. They thought they were being wise on him also. So, children of God, when we are praying for wisdom, we are praying for wisdom from God, not as the world knows it, but with the mind of the Holy Spirit, which is what he said in Romans. Not what you think is right. That is why everything must be done in an atmosphere of prayer and reflection. Gethsemane, not my will, but your will, O Lord. It is not about knowing or not knowing what is right. At times we know what is right, 
but being able to do it is where the problem lies. For all of us, even myself, being able to do it is the issue. Or not even knowing at all. You see, we think we are so smart. And God at times has to come to our level to explain things for us. Remember when our father Elijah was being taken to heaven by the whirlwind and the chariots came and split them together. If that was a plane, how will the prophet Elisha be able to explain that when they've never seen a plane before? We are only given things that we can comprehend with our own minds because that knowledge is too much for us. It's like you see a train of ants moving on and you put your finger in it and one of them climbed onto it. Now you've bent down, then you lift it up and you look at it. It looks at you, then you put it down. And the other ant says, where have you been? The hand will say, I have seen the face of God. It's so small, so insignificant that it cannot even comprehend how big we are. And that is how we can see God. We can't even comprehend. And he sees all. But we are so wrapped up. Thinking that yes, this world is ours to do as we wish. To deal with each other as we wish. Not realizing that only God lives forever. When Jacob was strong. He deceived his brother. He learned hardship. He had to grow up fast. He learned servitude. When he was old and no longer powerful, his own children did what? Deceived him. There comes a time when we are no longer powerful or in control of events. And you've seen it around the world with the talk of a new narrative. People ruling, telling, saying to you that, oh, I'm going to rule for the next 100 years. Really? <laughs> Those before you have said that, where are they today? They've built mausoleum to themselves, where are they today? Broken down after a few centuries. Millions suffered because of their madness. They thought they were wise. People applaud them. And their story becomes that of Lazarus and the rich man. Wisdom. Let us pray for wisdom. Let us search for wisdom. When God said to King David, King Solomon in a dream, what will, in Kings, what do you want from me? What did he ask for? Wisdom. He didn't say gold or silver. And after that, everything was given to him. Let us pray to God for wisdom and understanding. That is the only way that will lead us to Christ our Redeemer. Many other things in life are also priceless. Food, homes, jobs, health. All these are important. And I'm not trying to underestimate that. They're all very important. But having the wisdom to know what food to eat that if um, you see rotten food, if you are so hungry and you eat it, you're going to be worse off. To pursue your dreams at the expense of hurting others along the way is not a good dream or reality. Voltaire once said, the best is the enemy of the good. To achieve the best in life, 
you often have to reject other things which are quite good but not as important. John Dryden in his play, Hall for Love, said, Errors like straws upon the surface flows. He who will search for pearls must dive below. We need to dig deep in our prayer life, in our search for Christ in our day-to-day -day living. To find love and meaning in our lives, we must go deep, go below the surface like the divers to find that hidden gem, the kingdom of God. When you find it, be ready to sacrifice everything, no matter how good and important they are, to make God the king and ruler of your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I leave you again with that word from Matthew 7, 6. Do not throw your pearls before swine. Many people have thrown away their pearls, believing that all that glitters is gold, yet all that glitters is not gold. Let us pray for wisdom and understanding, not for ourselves only, but for our leaders, our friends and neighbors. When we begin to learn to know of God, to learn to know of the impact of what we are doing on each other and the planet, this world will be a better place. We will be better people. So as we continue on our Christian pilgrimage, let us learn to seek the kingdom of God daily in our prayer lives. And especially when you are praying this week, open up your Bible or print out a copy of the Lord's Prayer and pray for the kingdom of God to come intentionally into his creation so that there will be peace and harmony and justice in this life to prepare us for the world to come. Amen. Amen. And we're going to sit for a moment while I count us things. Seek you first for us, the kingdom of God. Let us look.
Let us stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed from page 7 of our dream books. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us sit or kneel for our prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly and most gracious Father, dear God, through the power of your Holy Spirit, we welcome you into our presence today. At a time when our fellowship gathering is sporadic, we ask you to bring us together in the spirit of your love. Bring us together as one in unity with you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring us closer to you, our God. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, create in us a clean heart, hearts to love, hearts to give freely, and hearts to be selfless, to bring to your attention all those who are working tirelessly to care for the sick, the dying, the needy, the vulnerable and those who are isolated. We pray particularly for the frontline services, the NHS workers, our doctors and nurses, those keeping the spaces clean, free from COVID, and those who are at risk because their protection from COVID is scarce. Lord, please protect them, shield them with your armor especially at times when they may feel anxious and worried about their health, physically and mentally. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, our Comforter, at this time we think of those who may be in pain, physical and emotional. We thank you, Lord, for being our healer, that when we are in distress, we can turn to you, you encourage us to bring our burdens, our concerns, our worries to you and promise to carry them for us, telling us your yoke is easy. 
it will take away our burdens. We pray today, Lord, that those who yearn for comfort will turn to you. Ease their mind, Lord. Help them, Lord, to allow you to carry them gently to a place free from their ills. We pray especially for those in mourning, grieving the loss of a loved one, feeling bereft during this time of lockdown, and maybe suffering from the impacts of what this pandemic has caused them. Whatever their concerns may be, Lord, you are sure to know about it and already have a plan to ease their troubled mind. Be with them, Lord. Meet them in their time of need as we pray they will come knocking at your foot of your cross. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, Father of all fathers, we pray for all those who are in authority positions, whether they are leaders in the government, world leaders, leaders in our churches, especially our local churches and here at Emmanuel. We pray for our Reverend Canon Addy and his family. Bless him, Lord, bless his family. Continue to give him and all other leaders the courage, the strength, the endurance, the wisdom and the understanding to bring the gospel to your people. In such a time as this, a challenging time, we pray you will be instrumental in guiding them through the power of your Holy Spirit to do what is right and to do what is good for your people as they carry out their mission to serve you dutifully. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we pray for our Queen and the monarchy. Bless them, dear Lord, as they participate in ruling over your people. To be loving, to be kind and to be sensitive to the needs of all the people they serve. We pray they will be diligent in being a voice of social injustices, a voice to er eradicate poverty and impoverishment from people's lives and be a voice to promote unity, love, peace and happiness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Father God, thank you for the concern you show to all your children, that you have a heart for those who are suffering. You encourage us to bring the little ones to you, Lord, to be blessed and to be healed from their woes. We bring to you our children, Lord, who are suffering in silence, feeling isolated and lonely, those who feel they have no friends, those who are worried about their education, those who are worried about their parents and their loved ones, those who are fearful of their future, and particularly those with concerns about their mental health, involved in criminal activities, and those desperate to leave gangs, dysfunctional families, or escape the terrors in their lives. Lord, hear their cries, especially those that are invisible and may not be easily seen. We pray, Lord, you meet their needs. Root them out, Lord, and help them to grow in a world that you own. Help us, Lord, to be vessels, to fill our minds up with vision and action to stir, to be servants in helping others. Lord, in your mercy. And at this time, I invite you, in this time of silence, to bring to the Lord your concerns, to take this opportunity to pray for others, others you know of who need the Lord. In this silence, bring your burdens, your petitions, your supplications, your prayers to the Lord. And bringing all these prayers together, we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
and it's the seventh Sunday after Trinity. So the collect today is Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all things, all good things, graft in our hearts the love of thy name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Collection. Collection. <laughs> and now it's time for our collection. If you, you can still put your yeah. weekly offering yeah. in ID and just lift it up when the prayer has been said and then when it's done. I'll tell you afterwards. Yeah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this money received and those received through the gift aid. Thank you, Lord, for the hearts that have given this money. We pray that you will bless them. Help us, Lord, to use this money wisely in this church for the good of your people and your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What time is it? <laughs> okay. I'm just checking that it's still morning. I couldn't quite work out what time of the day it was before I said good afternoon. So good morning. It's still got another 10 minutes. Well, it's so lovely to see even more of you this week. So bit by bit, we're moving forward. Little by little, we're making strides for closer to the cross. We're going in the right direction. It's an absolute pleasure to see you all this morning. And we just pray for those who couldn't make it in church today. And we just pray, and it would be an encouragement for them to know that we are all here. Of course, some people may still be shielding and staying indoors for all kinds of reasons. But we will encourage you, if you are a little bit worried about coming into church. We are social distancing, so please bear in mind it's... It's each to their own, I think, because, I'm, of course, if you feel you need to wear a mask in here, then we will encourage that. Otherwise, we are making sure that you are sitting within reasonable distance so that we are all protected and protecting each other. But we are in the Lord's house, so try not to worry too much. You are in the right place. If anything's going to happen, you're in the right place for it to happen. <laughs> So I hope you have a wonderful, I hope your time here was a blessed one. 
If anyone needs to know anything about the collection, yes, we are still taking collection because we want you to know that no matter when you get here, the door is still open, that you know, we are still here as a church. We still have to pay our bills, we still have to keep the church going, and the Lord will provide. So, you know, we must really have faith. And this is the time, isn't it been a time when our faith has been tested? How many months ago is it? Good four months to the day almost when we were on lockdown and we've survived four months, we are here in church. So keep the faith and keep moving forward. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day and look forward to seeing you next week. Just to add on to what um, Reverend Eileen has said, it's good to see you all, and um, our prayers are always with you and all, our, all your loved ones, and uh, may God continue to bless each and every one of you and to protect you and put a hedge of protection around you and your loved ones as you go out in your going out and coming in. So do please look after yourselves, take care of yourselves, and God is in control. And remember our yearly text, Isaiah 63, my year of redemption has come. And may God redeem us from all evil, sin and unsin, from all things, sin and unsin, and take us through this year safely. That is our petition to the to Almighty God, and knowing that he cares for us, that is his will for us, his children, and to remember the world at this most difficult time and to pray seriously for wisdom for all our leaders throughout the world. We need the wisdom of Christ to get through this. Please stand for the benediction. The Lord God Almighty look upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, grant you his grace, his love, his mercy and protection, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you and all your loved ones, now and forevermore. And um, our final hymn is number 306. which is forth in your name, O Lord, I go.